Assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, welcome to Obi Talks. Joining me today on Obi Talks is my friend uh, from Minnesota, USA, Sean McCann. Uh, so thank you so much, Sean, for uh, taking out time and uh, joining me for Obi Talks. It's great to be here. Uh, looking forward to the chat. Yeah, likewise. So, Sean, Sean, since I know that uh, you're an artist and that's how we got to know you know each other. So, please tell us about uh, yourself, uh, what kind of art do you do and uh, how did it start for you? Yeah, well, I've always known I've wanted to be an artist since I was young. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that I've always, I've always wanted to draw and paint. I didn't know what that meant when I was, when I was growing up. But I knew it was something involving art. And so I went to the Minneapolis College of Art and Design for my schooling after I was done with high school and got into illustration and painting and really loved that. And from there, I just kind of fell into street art by accident when I was in my early 20s. And that really transformed what I do today. It's something that I, I loved doing chalk art on the sidewalk. I loved doing chalk art for events and didn't realize that there was a whole other world out there for street art. And so that kind of pushed me into doing, you know, 3D street art and murals and installation art. And so whatever I can get my hands on I and can make a mess with, I, I enjoy doing. Right. So uh, Sean, since you had uh, a training, uh, you had a training as an artist uh, or you went to an art school and uh, I can see that uh, you work on canvases as well uh, and you have a studio practice as well. But uh, since I got to know you as a street artist and, uh, and a 3D, 3D street artist to be exact. So how did you know, like you said, it was an accident for you, you uh, stumbled upon 3D uh, street art. So how did uh, street art happen? Like, uh, did you meet some artist or is, it was something that you were experimenting with? And uh, uh, let me just attach one more question uh how did you you know start doing 3d art did you like study it uh, in your college were you exposed to it in your art school or uh, was it uh, some outside influence and how did you you know learn the techniques that are uh, involved in creating uh, the illusions well unfortunately the the art school that i went to did not have any any classes on street art and things like that and um so for me it was a chance encounter with Tracy Lee Stum, Rod Tryon, and um, Joel Yao in, in St. Paul, Minnesota. They came into town for an event that um, at the time, Anthony Capetto had uh, Art for After Hours and all the artists were, um, were there. And so I got a chance to meet them and see how they created while I was creating my own art. And it was something that it blew my mind because at that point I had never seen 3D chalk art and mm -hmm. Tracy was working on one and it was really fascinating to watch how it came together and thankfully you know they were welcoming to all of my questions I had and all of the kind of nuances of, of learning from them as well and so that kind of started that and that was I think in 2006 and so probably about 15 years ago and from then you know stayed in touch with Anthony and Wendy and and everybody and just kind of started learning that process there. And, and that's where it all began for doing, you know, starting to learn about the 3D and then actually doing it. So it's something that's been going on for quite a while. And, uh, and it, was, it was wonderful to be able to, to get to meet and expand that, that family of street artists, including, you know, finally meeting you when we were at Dubai Canvas a few years ago. And so it's just one of those things that you don't realize how small of a world it is because we all have such a great connection to each other with what we do. And it's just such a wonderful, a wonderful uh, thing to do for a living. Right. Uh, yeah, it, it was, you know, great uh, meeting. Uh, obviously the best part about uh, this 3D art for me is, uh, uh, or ever since I've been doing street art, uh, is that I got to meet, you know, people from different backgrounds and, uh, uh, different cultures and uh, you know when I started going to festivals I started you know getting to meet them and know them as well so that was you know really uh, the thing that I 
liked or enjoy about uh, street art uh, or three D art. So, since you've mentioned that you've been uh, into uh, this art form uh, and practicing it for a good fifteen years now, so how has your what's your process like? Like, how do you come up with uh, ideas for your art and uh, Obviously, uh, you had a training as an artist, so you know how to come up with ideas. But how, uh, the art that uh, that art students uh, create or college graduates create is different uh, than what we do on the streets. Uh, so, how do you make your imagery relevant to the people on the street so they connect with? Because I was talking to Naomi the other day, and uh, I was asking the same question to her that how how does she you know come up with her ideas and she mentioned uh, you that uh, you are one of those artists that uh, who always come up with relevant imagery and you know people instantly connect with and after that i also you know started to uh, notice uh, i went through all your works uh, and so kind of found it that your imagery is very relevant to the events or the times or the trends or what's happening right now. How do you come up with uh, your ideas and what are your influences? Is there like particular concepts that you follow or is a style of work that you follow or you just, you know, go with the flow depending on the event? Well, it, it there are a number of different things that kind of play into what, what is created. Um, whether it's for like a festival where you have a little bit more freedom to create images and concepts that are um, what's going on with the world today versus if you're working for a client that has a particular purpose behind what they're wanting to be created. And so when I have the opportunity to create something that I want to create, I'm influenced by so many different art forms. I love the traditional artists that created art, you know, 100, 200 years ago and longer. Um, and then I love the different art forms that are going on now, whether it's graffiti art, um, whether it's street painting, chalk art. Um, it's just really something that we are blessed to be able to be in an, in a, in an age where we can find so much wonderful um, influences through the internet. And, you know, a hundred years ago, we, you and I would have never been talking like this. And so it's, it's fascinating where you can get inspired by and the friends that I have in my circle and out beyond that are inspiring in the work that they do. And so it's something that I'm always, whenever I see projects that other artists are working on, it kind of gets my brain thinking as well. And, and just kind of take that to that kind of next level, hopefully. Right. Uh, so since we're talking about uh, the processes involved in creating the art, how do you like, uh, you know, uh, formulate your ideas? Like, what's your design process like? Uh, like, do you photograph uh, your, uh, you know, things that you want to paint? Or uh, do you like do sketches for them? Or uh, now I have uh, seen many artists use, you know, technology as well. They have like softwares coming now. They use that, that it will create 3D models and then use them, uh, you know, uh, to create uh, or make the execution of the artworks easier on site. So what's your process like and uh, what kind of mediums do you work with? Do you only work with, uh, you know, water-based mediums or uh, chalk, chalk pastels? or uh, do you work with oils as well? Yeah, I mean, the, the process itself is, you know, I always come up with numerous ideas um, in the traditional route, sketching and drawing and things like that. Um, I, I don't use any 3D modeling programs yet. I do use like Procreate on the iPad to where I can digitally sketch and things like that. Um, it's just sometimes so much easier to be able to do that. But I do love the physical element of sketching and, and drawing in, in uh, regular drawing pads and, and, and such. So I, I, I come up with numerous ideas and kind of flush out the, the things that I want to potentially draw and, and then create a more, you know, refined concept and sketch so that whenever I start an actual painting or a street painting on the ground, I know exactly what I'm going to be creating. I know how it's going to look. The client knows how it's going to look. And so the final 
production of it, whether it's in chalk or acrylics or oil, all depends on what it what it's going to be done. If it's just for a festival for the weekend, then I'll use the chalk pastels. If it's a permanent mural on the side of a building, I'll usually use you know exterior mural paints and and things like that. So the the fortunate thing is I'm I'm I've worked in a lot of the different mediums from watercolors to pastels to acrylics to um, spray paint and also um, mural paints. And so it's it's something that you know it's the same process, just a different technique in each of those. Right. So uh, since we are, um, since I know that uh, you do a lot of uh, commercial works as well. Uh, so how do you like, like most of us artists depend on uh, commercial clients as well for our living. And uh, one thing that happens with commercial clients is that, that uh, they, usually have a brief for us and uh, they want us to paint or depict their uh, or tell their story so how do you you know create uh, a balance between uh, you know keeping your um, artistic or uh, freedom intact and uh, also you know including the idea or what the client wants so how do you you know maintain that kind of balance well for me it's it's something that working with commercial clients is always a challenge because they have a set parameter of what needs to be created. And it's trying to find a way that makes it interesting and relevant to the process of street art and chalk art. And so oftentimes I will come up with a couple of different ideas and I'll kind of create the concepts based upon a couple of them will be based on what their thoughts are. And then I'll try and create a concept that is my thinking a little bit outside of the box to where it's not exactly what they had in their brief, but at the same time, it fulfills all of those ideas. And sometimes clients will actually go for those out of the box ways of thinking because they have a specific way in which they always do their work. And sometimes you have to trust the professionals that you hire to be able to create something that is going to elevate what you're trying to do. And so by by showing and kind of talking through them with the possibility of doing it a little bit different way than what they think, but still come out with an idea and an image that kind of focuses on what they're doing, you can sometimes come out with an even better idea and finished product. So, but it is a challenge because sometimes they have a set, you know, something that you have to paint and you just have to work with it because that's that's what they need to have completed. So, and that's the the challenge with working commercially versus working in your own studio and doing what you really want to do. And so, but sometimes the commercial work is what helps pay the bills, mm -hmm. you know, in order to be able to do that outside other work. Yeah, it's since you just mentioned that uh, you have, and I also know that you have a studio practice as well. Uh, how often do you get to, you know, work uh, in your studio? And uh, is it like a regular thing or uh, you get uh, rarely a chance to work uh, in the studio? Well, most of the time, um, I don't get a whole lot of time in the studio itself. Um, I'm usually you know, elsewhere on projects and things like that. And, but um, now that the weather up here in Minnesota has gotten a lot colder, there mm -hmm. isn't as many projects outside because it's just, there's snow on the ground. There's, you know, things like that. So I have to travel elsewhere to be able to do those kind of projects. But that's usually when I get more time in the studio is in the fall and winter. Um, but it's something that, you know, I love being able to just let myself go and create what I want to create and and do that versus you know being on site on a project sometimes so uh, do you do gallery shows as well can you hear me um i have i have done some gallery shows it's been a while since i've done a full-on gallery show. I used to do those all the time. And that's actually where they had first found my my art when they had asked to do a chalk drawing as they had seen one of my paintings. And so 
but um, it's been a while since I've actually done a full on gallery show, but I'd love to do another one soon. So. Right. Uh, so since you've uh, been, uh, you know, practicing or doing a uh, street art for over 15 years now. So when was the first time you went to an art festival? Uh, and uh, how was your experience? Like you just mentioned, you worked with uh, Tracy and uh, Rod and uh, Anthony and Wendy. Uh, was it at a festival or um, it was just rent uh, or it was uh, somewhere random you got to meet them? And uh, when, was, when did you go to your first festival outside uh, America? Well, my first official like chalk festival that I went to was in Sarasota in 2010. Um, that was a few years after I first met Tracy and Anthony and Rod and Joel. Um, they had come out to Minnesota for a children's festival that had as part of it some chalk artists that were being um, that were creating. So my first full on chalk festival experience was in Sarasota with hundreds of artists and it was absolutely amazing. I loved every bit of it and, uh, you know, got to, to work next to Edgar Mueller and Leon Kerr and his crew and everybody. And so it was really inspiring. Um, the first time that I went overseas was in 2011, I believe it was when I went to IIT Bombay in Mumbai mm. um, in India and uh, went for their tech fest and uh, did some art over there and Anthony went as well. And so it was really an eye-opening experience because at that point I had never traveled, you know, outside of the U S to create art. And so it was fascinating to be able to, to go overseas and be in a different culture and to experience new things. And it really was, was wonderful because I love that exploration and meeting new people and, and being immersed in, in new cultures and ways of thinking. Right. Uh, since uh, I just found out that uh, you're uh, also now uh, organizing a festival as well, like you co-founded an event. So how uh, different is it, uh, you know, since you've always been working as an artist in different festivals, so how different uh, is the role uh, as an organizer? Uh, or is it easy, you know, or you already know the needs of uh, the artists? And uh, since we know that uh, uh, organization requires, uh, you know, a different skill set and uh, there are different challenges like, you know, bringing in sponsors and everything. So how do you, you know, um, uh, deal with it and how different is it uh, working uh, from working as an artist? Uh, organizing and running festivals are definitely um, a completely different um, mindset than creating at them. And I currently um, run and organize seven different street art chalk festivals. And so, which is quite a few, but I love the fact that in these opportunities, I get to bring a lot of my street art friends into communities that may not have had these festivals before. And so having done a lot of these festivals and chalk art events, it's nice to be able to know ahead of time what is needed, what needs to be accomplished in order to make a successful and, um, and great event. And so it's just a challenge to make sure that everything um, happens in the order it's supposed to happen and make sure that you have enough artists that can come out and participate and hope that the weather holds off and, and gives you some great time to be able to create. And so there's a lot of challenges in you know, just putting everything together and make sure that it happens in the way it's supposed to. And then also hoping that things that are out of your control, like um, airline delays and weather and things like that, don't get to be too crazy and um, you can still put on a great event. Are you still on mute? I can't quite hear you. Sorry. Yeah. So you've also traveled to Europe as well for uh, different festivals and uh, you, I've worked with you in uh, Dubai Canvas and you've been to India as well. And uh, you are, you're based in uh, US and you've been to different festivals and you're an organizer there as well. So how different, uh, how have you found uh, each festival different? Like, uh, 
obviously audiences are different culture is different uh, different in every part of the world but uh, how has your experience been with uh, you know different audiences uh, because every audience has a different uh, sometimes different set of questions some aren't exposed to uh, you know this art form uh, that we do 3d art especially uh, the time you mentioned uh, uh, 2011 that you went to india uh, obviously street art or 3d art wasn't as popular uh, there so how has your experience been uh, working with uh, you know different audiences in different places well the great thing is everywhere i've gone um the audience appreciates and loves art and that's that's the main thing the the subtle differences are how they communicate that kind of love of what you're doing um i think in the southern united states i think there has been um, a longer um, a longer exposure to all of these events. Some of these events have been going on for 30 years, where in the Midwest where I live, it's only been the matter of the last like six to 10 years that, that these events have been going on. And so it's still new to a lot of people. And so they're very reserved and they look, but they don't, you know, sometimes they don't ask a whole lot of questions or interact. Um, in, in visiting the other countries and stuff, I, I love how, even though sometimes there's a language barrier, um, it's still something that there is that commonality of how we interact with each other and you can see the appreciation. And so, you know, from my time in like Colombia to Germany, to the United Kingdom and Dubai and India, China, and all the different places, there is still that, um, overarching, love of the art form and so the appreciation that you're out there creating it for them and you know how they can you know soak that in before it's gone since a lot of what we do is so temporary and ephemeral Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you now. Can okay. you hear me there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Okay, so uh, since uh, for I think uh, ever since uh, this art form uh, that we do has uh, you know uh, been getting viral on uh, social media, uh, it has changed a lot. Uh, especially after I think uh, 2013, 14, uh, it has you know changed a lot, and uh, all the artworks that artists create, they keep uh, they kind of keep the social media audiences as well, and uh, the selfie culture that has uh, come in uh, in our you know lives. So, uh, so how do you see this uh, you know evolving in future as well, like uh, also the technology is coming in there are a lot of people uh, using augmented reality and uh, other tools to make the art more interactive more interesting and you know uh, more and you know inviting more people to engage so how where do you see this uh, art from street art or 3d art in general heading in the future well, i think there's always going to be a need for actually physically creating the art on site and something that people can see and and watch be created but i think there's going to be also a huge opportunity for artists upcoming in like the metaverse to where it's something that virtually i think there will be a lot of opportunities for artists um, in many different mediums and art forms to be able to create art in a way that people can you know, virtually connect and see it being created. And so I, I love the, the physical act of making a mess with your hands and creating the art um, on the street and on the wall. And, but as I dabble more and more into the virtual reality and augmented reality, it's something that it's, it's kind of a unknown yet as to where that's gonna go. But I think there's gonna be that blending of how do you create space and, and images that work well as a standalone piece that people can see, but then also provides other opportunities like 
with what like Leon's doing with some of his murals to where that augmented um, portion comes off, you know, you, you aim your phone at the, at the wall and then all of a sudden you've got an augmented element to it. So it's something that I think there will be a lot more of that in the future. And, but for this, for the same notion, I think we'll keep continuing to create beautiful pieces, you know, as standalone pieces as well. Hmm. Uh, I have, uh, I, I would like to attach one more question to this. Uh, now the, there are a lot of museums opening as well for, uh, you know, illusion museums for 3D art, especially where, uh, you know, I think you've, you've painted as well at museums uh, in the US. So um, where do you see, uh, or how do you see this, uh, you know, uh, happening or uh, is it a good thing for our art form? Because, uh, or is it, is it, or is it, will it have a negative kind of an impact? Because uh, what made uh, this, uh, this is my understanding, what made 3D art or street art different from uh, the art that's displayed in the galleries is that, uh, that people, you know, get to experience the process of creation. Uh, like in the festivals, people come when the block of the paint where you painting is empty you know they they're generally uh, revisiting for two three days and they see the whole process of creation and uh, during that they also become a part of it and they get to see uh, from nothing uh, to, uh, from nothing and uh, they see an artwork come to life so but in the museums uh, it's very different it's more like uh, the gallery thing like they just come when the art is created and obviously they get to take uh, pictures as well, but uh, does it, uh, you know, mean anything to them or do they, uh, are they able to create any sort of connection with it? Uh, where do you see this going? Because uh, I, I was talking to Naomi the other day as well. Uh, she had uh, her opinion. So I would really like to know your opinion as well, since you are in the middle of the things. Well, I think there's, there's a place for both both cases. I think as a illusion museum and bringing street art into a museum, I think it opens it up to a wider audience that may not have seen it before, especially when you put some of these illusion museums into malls and things. A perfect example is the wonderful things that have been going on with Tracy Lee Stum's um, Tilt Museum. You are opening it to a whole nother audience that might not have ever gone to a chalk festival per se. Mm -hmm. And you're giving them the opportunity to to see how they are created and interact with them. I think the the wonderful ephemeral quality of creating art live and seeing an artist bring it together at a chalk festival is something that you can never you can never attain from a finished piece that nobody mm -hmm. is around and it's just stuck on a wall. But I think there is a great notion of having those museums and having those opportunities for people to see because it just widens the, the, the aspect of how people see our work. And in a society that has an ever shortening uh, attention span, sometimes you only have like 10 seconds to capture somebody's attention, otherwise they move on. And I think social media is, is partly to blame for that because they're so used to scrolling through thousands of images in a matter of 20 minutes. And so these opportunities to be able to stand and pose with something and share it on social media in a museum then widens what we do as artists. And then people will be like, well, we wanna see that created in our community. And so I, I love that they're, they're there. I wish these kind of places had been around when I was younger. Mm -hmm. because I was in an area that there wasn't a whole lot of opportunity to see art. Oh. And um, anytime we can get art in front of an audience, I think is a great thing. And so it's just making sure that whatever is created is at the best quality so that you're not just putting a bunch of crap out there that doesn't have any purpose or meaning. And it's simply to just fill a wall, if, if, if you know what I mean. Mm. Right. Uh, so uh, since the, the whole world, you know, been experiencing uh, the COVID situation for uh, almost a couple of years now, how has it affected your art practice? Uh, like, how has it affected your business as an artist? Uh, did you, you know, like lose opportunities or did you, you know, 
had something that you wanted to do insights and uh, you weren't getting any time for it and uh, this covid you know uh, or the lockdown situation the whole world has been facing uh, you know got you opportunity to work uh, on what you wanted to work so how what kind of impact has it had on your art practice i think there's both been a negative and a positive impact on my work there have been a number of projects that were supposed to happen like last year and the beginning of this year that postponed and a lot of the things that kind of canceled were the couple of uh, projects that i had scheduled for overseas mm -hmm. and so just traveling um, that way definitely made it to where it just couldn't happen at this point and i'm hopeful that it will come back and be something that will you know happen either next year or the year mm -hmm. after and so, but I think it also gave me an, a great opportunity to, to kind of step back a little bit and think about what I'm doing as an artist and where I want to see myself in the years to come. Because as I get older, it's like my body is definitely feeling that physical notion of having to create street art um, now that I've been doing it for, you know, 15, 16 years. And so where that you know, became beneficial is I got a chance to, because before that, everything was, was so like crazy and just running from project to project that it gave me that time to stop and reflect on what I was doing, where I wanted to see things. And for me, it kind of made it where I wanted to be more a part of as an organizer of events in areas that don't necessarily get these kind of opportunities, mm -hmm. because I, I enjoy bringing that that art to other communities and so for example in north dakota there weren't any street art festivals you know three four years ago for chalk art and now we've got you know that next year there'll be four of them and so it's something that to see these communities embrace and love this art form has been really wonderful and then also bringing artists in to experience kind of the vastness that you know a place like North Dakota has that they typically wouldn't go to so for me it was it was good it was something that a lot of projects that ended up canceling I filled them with other opportunities that I wouldn't have had time for just because I would have been doing something else and uh, it's slowly gotten back to normalcy and you know doing that but there's still a few things that you know some of the big events that would have happened aren't happening and um, hopefully we'll just be able to bring them back soon. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, so it's been uh, really nice, uh, you know, talking to you and listening to you. And uh, I, this brings me to, you know, my last question or, uh, you know, more, more like, uh, uh, you know, more like uh, an advice I would want you to give to, uh, you know, upcoming artists or people who want to try art in any form uh, from different backgrounds and then specifically street art or 3D art. So if you could, you know, give them a couple, one or two advices or you know, so they probably some, they could avoid some mistakes or that you made and you think you could have avoided or uh, some advices in general. Well, the first thing I would say is follow your dreams. It's something that we have such a short lifespan here on earth. Mm -hmm. And it's something that I wanted to, whenever my time is up, I wanted to make sure I did what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And so if you want to be a street artist, if you want to be an artist in general, follow that dream. It's not always an easy one. It's something that you're going to have a lot of failures along the way, but in every time we fail as an artist or a person, we learn from those mistakes and we become a better person, hopefully. And so it's something that just, you know, keep working at it, keep doing it. It's something that takes a while. Sometimes you can be fortunate and lucky and it just hits right away and you are instantly like, you know, connected to everybody and you have tons of projects. But for a lot of the artists, you really have to put your, the hard work in, in getting your name out there, working, putting together a portfolio and just keep doing it because it's something that if you keep bettering yourself and bettering your art and are a person that people want to work with, eventually they'll find you and things will work out in that way. So just uh, keep practicing, keep doing it. And uh, we're all in it together. So there's, 
it's it's something that I love the street art family, the chalk art family that I've gotten to know. And I can't wait to every time a new event comes up where I get to see everybody. It's just that much more inspiring to be able to keep doing this for a career. Yeah, great advice. And, uh, you know, we share the everyone, you know, shares the same sentiment as you do that uh, whoever, you know, has had experience uh, meeting different chalk artists or street artists. So we all share uh, the same uh, sentiment that, you know, every new event is a new opportunity to meet, you know, new people and old friends as well. So with this, you know, um, uh, it was really uh, nice uh, talking to you and listening to you know your experiences and your perspective on things uh, so we are coming towards uh, the end of our session uh, if you wanted to say anything and i didn't ask uh, so you can you know say it now and uh, then we can wrap it up well i would just say um i would encourage people to reach out to artists that inspire them and connect with them and just follow, follow people who inspire you because it's something that having that will and drive to keep pushing really makes it worthwhile. And it's something that, um, be kind and cordial to everybody and uh, it'll come back to you in tenfold. So just enjoy what you do and, and keep doing it. Brilliant. So thank you so much, John, for, uh, you know, taking out your time and uh, joining me for uh, uh, OB Talks. It was a pleasure talking to you. It was wonderful talking to you as well. And hope you have a, a great rest of your day. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.